Today we're going to look at the role of burn-in in the electronics design and manufacturing process. The first thing you need to know about is something called the bathtub curve. This is well known in engineering as the shape of the failure rate over time for most products. In a batch of products, if one is going to fail, it will most likely fail soon after it's put into use, the early failure period. Units that make it through that period are more likely to last through their entire expected lifetime until they start failing because they're worn out. At Z-axis, we use burn-in to get units through the early failure period here at our facility rather than after they reach their customers. We design and build burn-in fixtures specific to each product. We connect the units into the fixtures, then move them into the burn-in chambers. The burn-in chamber condenses the normal early failure period from weeks or months down to a few days. The fixtures are plugged in and then the units powered up. Cycling the power on and off accelerates any component failures that will happen due to inrush current and thermal expansion stresses. Keeping the burn-in chamber at a higher temperature further accelerates early component failures. The rule of thumb is that the failure rate will double for every 10 degrees Celsius, so running the burn-in chamber at 60 degrees Celsius, or 140 Fahrenheit, we expect the products to fail about 16 times faster than at room temperature. A more extensive burn-in is ESS, or environmental stress screening. Rather than holding a high temperature, ESS uses repeated temperature cycling from hot to cold. This causes mechanical stress on the board, including the solder joints, and forces any weak areas to fail in-house. For mission-critical products, such as jet engine controls, we do ESS on 100% of a production run. Burning can find a single bad part or solder joint if one unit fails or an entire batch of products if a lot of units start failing for the same reason. When that happens, our engineers investigate to discover the root cause and work with our component suppliers and manufacturing engineers to resolve the issue. Another type of burn-in is long-term burn-in to validate new designs. Here we burn in a number of the first units of a new product over many years to simulate the entire expected lifetime of the product, not just the early failure period. This lets us know early on if there may be problems a decade or more down the road and make necessary design changes now. In short, burn-in can weed out early failures due to defects, help us detect problems with component suppliers or manufacturing processes, and help us get high long-term reliability from new designs. In the end, it's all about getting high reliability products to our customers. Visit us at zaxis.net to learn more.